Hey guys, welcome to the 14th episode of my paint and pigment making series where I'm going to be making paint out of gentian violet. Gentian violet or crystal violet is a dye that's used as a stain in Graham's method of classifying bacteria but is mostly used as an antiseptic. It's cheap and easy to find in any pharmacy in most of the world and it's also so pigmented that a little can go a long way. Although it's named after the gentian flower, it's not plant-based but is a synthetic dye. Although the natural ones are fun, I'm always relieved to be making a synthetic pigment since you're guaranteed that it won't fade on you or change color. I'm going to try to use it as an ink, make a chalk and alum pigment out of it, then use it to make both acrylic and oil paint. I'm just going to go ahead and pour some of this gentian violet into a jar with water. If you're going to try doing this after seeing the video, just be mindful that this stuff is insanely staining. For the lake pigment process, I'm just going to do the same thing I did in my bamboo one since that made the best textured pigment so far. I add some alum to the solution, mix it well, and then I add a little bit of washing soda. I also pour some of it in a lid of a jar to see if I would end up with super fine particles once the liquid evaporated. The surface is so dark and reflective that it looks metallic. Very cool! This is what it looked like as it was drying, but we'll get back to that later. While the lake pigment is filtering off, I place a spoon of sifted chalk into the lid of a jar and then I add it to some undiluted gentian violet. I'd kind of like to phase out using alum and washing soda and apparently the old masters used to mix their pigments with chalk and linseed oil so it might be a viable option. It's pretty much the same recipe except that tinting the chalk makes it also play the role of pigment. I add a little bit of water to help it out and after it's mixed I leave it out to dry. While I was waiting on everything, I wanted to see if gentian violet is affected by pH, so I rubbed both vinegar and washing soda into some of it that had spilled on my canvas table. Nothing really happened, which means this dye is very stable and won't need any light or color fastness tests. Here are both the dry chalk and alum pigments. The alum one is significantly more pigmented than the chalk. I'm pretty amazed with the color of it actually. I put it into a mortar and use a pestle to grind it up. It grinds very easily and is making a very, very fine pigment. I definitely prefer using this over a coffee grinder. I place it on my glass slab and add some walnut oil, which really should be done with a dropper.
This paint is extremely dark, which means it's very pigmented, and that's a very good sign. The texture is not perfect and buttery like commercial paints, but it's pretty decent. I think the next step on the quest for tiny particle size would be to buy an extremely fine mesh and really get those bigger particles out of the mix. I'm quite happy with this paint actually, it's a gorgeous color and brushes on and dilutes pretty well. I'm going to keep the leftovers and use them in a painting that I'm working on right now. After that's done, I take the chalk pigment and repeat the same process. This powder is noticeably lighter and less pigmented. Chalk really doesn't grab onto color as well as alum does, which is why it's such a great mordant. The chalk seemed to be very fine, but as soon as I added oil, it kind of seized up. It's very strange. It immediately went to gritty and coarse. I suspect that something is off with this chalk that I'm using since I bought it from a hardware store. I'm going to pick up some better quality chalk and try this again with the next dye that I work with. Kind of disappointing, this paint is not very usable. Now this is when I had an epiphany which really should have been really really obvious from the first video that I ever made. And it's that I've been trying to recreate historical methods while ignoring the fact that we have new products and materials that did not exist back then. For oil paint, the rules are the same old rules, but acrylic paint is very much new. I don't know why I haven't thought of it before, but I'm going to try directly tinting transparent acrylic medium with my dye. Of course, oil paint isn't something that can be replaced that easily, but this is still pretty useful. I'm using transparent acrylic medium that's self-leveling, which isn't ideal, but it's what I have on me right now. Since I can't find my dropper, I just dip my brush into the gentian violet, then mix it into the acrylic gel. A little really does go a long way. It's mixing in incredibly beautifully, I'm kind of kicking myself for not trying this out sooner. Yeah, it's, it's like a perfect paint. It's much more of a royal blue than a violet though, which I'm totally into. Mixed with white, it makes a really lovely color. The last test I'm going to do is painting the gentian violet directly from the bottle on both the canvas and a piece of paper. Now back to the gold metallic stuff. This was a happy and hard to explain surprise, but this is what the gentian violet alum mix looked after it had dried. It's almost like gold leaf. I may be onto something big. There's also some gold all over the bottle. I wonder if it can be scraped off. Nope. So the weird thing here is that gentian violet doesn't turn gold on skin or fiber or anything porous, but it seems to turn gold on smooth and glassy surfaces. I think this needs way more testing, but I'll leave that for another video because I really need to upload a new video. I hope you enjoyed this little experiment. I have a bunch more that I'm working on that I think you guys will really enjoy. We just hit 500 subscribers this week, which may seem like a small amount these days, but I never thought so many people would be interested in such a niche topic, and it's honestly very cool. So I just wanted to say, thanks for watching.